Zapol have been operating a grace period in relation to mobile phone detection cameras since around about the 19th of June this year. Uh, that grace period comes to an end at midnight tonight. Uh, during the grace period, uh, registered owners of vehicles uh, that have been detected with drivers using mobile phones have received a warning letter um, educating those people about the dangers of distraction and driving whilst distracted. But from midnight or one minute past midnight tonight, those warning letters uh, will no longer be sent um, and people will now receive a fine for using a mobile phone or driving their vehicle. Uh, during the grace period, uh, we've clearly allowed uh, drivers of vehicles who decide they are going to use a mobile phone while driving, give them an opportunity to change their driving behaviour. Um, if people want to continue um, after midnight tonight to use their phone while they're driving and they are detected, they run the real risk of losing their licence, uh, receiving a significant fine, and that fine is $556 plus $102 victims of crime levy and three demerit points, which will go some way uh, to people who continue to do this to lose their licence. I can tell you that um, through the grace period, around about 12 and a half million vehicles have crossed through the mobile phone detection camera locations. And as you know, there are five locations across Metropolitan Adelaide and they're detecting 13 lanes of traffic. Alarmingly, frighteningly, disappointingly, uh, during that period, there have been registered or drivers of, of vehicles, um, registered owners of vehicles, who have received multiple warning letters. Um, so 68,252 people have received warning letters during this period. One registered owner of a vehicle has received 33 warning letters. Now, um, I haven't done the maths, but 33 times 600 and something dollars and 33 times three demerit points means you're gonna be out of pocket a lot of money and you're not gonna have your driver's license for a very long time, which opens up another whole range of issues for that particular registered owner. Another registered owner has received 32 warning letters. Another registered owner has received 31 warning letters. If these people uh, have thought it's funny or have decided to play a bit of a game with the mobile phone detection cameras to see how many warning letters they can get uh, during this grace period, well, I can tell you the fun's over. Um, from tonight, you're copying a fine and you're gonna cop multiple fines if you continue to engage in that type of behaviour. So um, I encourage every motorist in South Australia, do not use your phone while you're driving. It is so simple, just don't do it. Um, you will avoid fines, you will avoid demerit points. Um, if I can maybe just go to uh, the screen, I'll just show you some, uh, a graph here. So you can see at the top uh, left of the graph, um, when we started the grace period around about the 19th of June, we are detecting around about just about 0.9% uh, of the volume of traffic uh, was receiving a warning letter. And we come right down to this end of the graph, which is where we are today. Well, it's about the 4th of um, September. And there is, the, the reason it's the 4th of September is a bit of a lag time in terms of processing uh, the, the warning letters. Um, so data from the 4th of September, you'll see that we've had a gradual decline um, over that three month period to now just at a number probably just under 0.4% um, of a detection rate. So uh, you can see that the line fluctuates and there'd be a number of factors for that, but generally you can see um, a downward trend in terms of uh, the warning letters that have been sent out during the grace period. Um, that is pleasing to see, um, and for us that is uh, the message <laughs> is getting through to people not to use their mobile phone uh, while driving, but what we'd like to see is that line continue to taper off um, uh, to zero if possible, um, but as close to zero as, as we can, because we know uh, that people who uh, drive distracted um, increase their ability or increase the likelihood, I should say, of having uh, a casualty collision, uh, a fatal collision or a, or a serious injury collision. 
Um, this year alone, out of the 59 lives lost on South Australian roads this year, 21 of those people, um, there's been distraction as a contributing factor in, uh, in their lives lost. And there's been over 1,600 casualty collisions where we know that distraction has been a factor. So yes, mobile phones are one cause of distraction. There are other causes of distraction, but we know talking to drivers, talking to witnesses, and from evidence that we see at collision scenes that mobile phones are a significant contributor to, to these um, statistics around collisions. Um, I just wanna make it clear uh, that um, from midnight tonight, um, if you are detected by one of the mobile phone detection cameras um, that are installed in Metropolitan Adelaide, you will receive a fine. You will receive a fine. There will be no more warning letters. There may be warning letters that are still sent past um, tonight because people who are detected uh, prior to midnight tonight, taking into account the lead time for processing, people may still receive a warning letter up to a week um, after midnight tonight, but from midnight, fines will start to be issued and people will start to receive fines within that period as well. So we just need to get through the lead time. I'll make it clear, there is no extension to the grace period. Um, if people are getting a warning letter um, after midnight tonight, it is mainly due to, to the processing processing time. Last message to drivers in South Australia, leave your phone alone while driving. Concentrate on the task at hand. Concentrate on uh, doing the right thing on the road and being a responsible road user for yourself, uh, for your family, for your friends, and uh, also really importantly for other road users um, who can be innocently caught up in people who, de who decide to drive distracted. Um, so um, we just might just show you a couple of photographs that uh, look the wrong way. Uh, you'll see here, um, and this is probably a, a classic photograph that we're, that we're receiving um, in through our, our back office at Expiation Notice Branch. Um, all these photographs um, have take, been taken by the motor, uh, mobile phone detection camera using the AI technology, but they've also been reviewed um, by a human, a human at uh, Expiation Notice Branch where they've been adjudicated and assessed to determine whether there has been a mobile phone detection, uh, mobile phone offence uh, detected. Um, and you'll see in this photograph, uh, the driver there is, is, looks like he's showing a passenger something on his phone. Um, again, this is someone who doesn't have their hand on the wheel at all. Uh, hamburger in one hand, phone in the other. Um, it just, it, it beggars belief, to be honest, um, how, how someone can drive like that. And I'll make the point, these mobile phone detection camera locations are not at traffic light locations. They are not picking up people who are stationary. These are people who are mobile and driving underneath the camera. They're not at static locations. Again, no hands on the wheel. Um, clearly engaged, uh, what I would say, sending a text message, well, that's how it appears. Um, uh, the satisfying thing about this, they've all got their seatbelts on, so that's, it's a good thing. Again, no hands on the wheel. This person's driving uh, what looks like, looks like a truck. And we're not just talking about light vehicles, um, cars here. We're, we're talking about people who are driving um, bigger vehicles on the road that can cause a lot more damage um, if they're distracted and involved in a collision. Again, uh, I think that person's given us the message um, as well as um, using the phone. Um, so that's how clear these, these pictures are. Um, and I, I think we can all agree that there's, there's no ambiguity about what these people are, are doing. Um, it's another person who's got, uh, must be a, a tradesman or something like that, it's got something um, attached to the roof of their van. Um, it's got one hand on the wheel, one hand on the phone. But this person um, clearly thinks it's okay to actually hold their phone against their chest uh, using the seatbelt. Um, I can tell you that's an offence. Uh, held means held on any part of your body. It doesn't just mean held in your hand. That is an offence. You cannot do that. Um, so people who think that they can position their phone under their seatbelt and hold it against their body and use it, you can't do it. 
Um, phones can be used in a car in certain circumstances if they're in a commercially approved cradle um, and are in that cradle while they're driving. That, uh, that doesn't work. And there's another example of that. So we've also got photographs and we've shown them before, we've got photographs of um, people having it on their lap, um, people have it on the passenger seat and are touching it on the passenger seat, not allowed, um, even though it's not on them, it's there. You can have your phone on the passenger seat, you just can't touch it uh, while you're driving. Uh, so there's, uh, there's the summary of what's happened in the last three months um, and where we're at now. Um, and from midnight tonight, uh, people who make the wrong decision they're going to be fined heavily. Uh, Darren, the math is pretty clear. It seems like it was going to, the person who had 33 warnings would have paid $21,000 in fines and he would have got a warning notice every two and a half days. What's your reaction to that? Uh, oh, it's, it's, I, I think it's just a complete definition of stupidity, really. Uh, why, why you would do that and why you would continue to place um, yourself and other road users um, at risk by doing that, it, it's, it's, just, it's just ridiculous, stupid, irresponsible driving behaviour, to, to be honest. We want to call it out for what it is, because uh, that's what it is. Um, there would have been over 1,200 people um, during this grace period that would have lost their licence. That's over 1,200 people who had four or more warning letters. So think about the impact of what losing your licence does for um, your occupation, uh, for your social um, events that you might go to, taking your kids to school, taking your kids to sport, catching up with your friends, making sure you get to work on time, all of those things. So you now over 1,200 people would have lost their licence, which causes um, some, some issues for them um, in their own lives. So you know, I, I can't be any more plain than that. People just need to be a lot more responsible um, on the road. And, 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 and some will argue it's not all mobile phones. We can see that distraction isn't always mobile phones, but as I said before, we have a lot of evidence to suggest that much of it is. Um, and this gives people an opportunity to change their behaviour. Uh, yes, revenue is generated. There is no doubt about that because I've spoken about the level of fines. And I think the police minister um, some months back stood up and said that he didn't care whether the government raised zero dollars out of this. Um, it's not about that. This is around about changing driver behaviour and it's around making the roads a safer place for everybody. 68,000 warning letters, that's just at the five locations. The Commissioner yesterday flagged that there would be some research into portable mobile phone detection cameras. I yeah. mean, is that something that you're considering given that there's been so many at just five places around Adelaide? Uh, yeah, look, we're, we're always looking at opportunities um, to enhance road safety outcomes. Um, and if that means that we uh, explore a, a portable camera detection option, then that's something that we'll look at. We know that other jurisdictions are using them and using them successfully um, as part of our ongoing commitment to road safety. That is something we look at. We, we regularly speak to our interstate colleagues um, around some of the strategies that they're using. So. Uh, it's probably fair to say that everything's on the table. Uh, we wouldn't discount that, um, but that's not a, a capability that we currently have. Um, this is what we currently have, um, but for sure, that's something on the track that we would likely explore. You're also looking at two new locations to come online next year. Has yeah. there been any further information about where they might be positioned? No, we're still working working through that. Uh, We've made no secret of the fact we are looking at two more locations and, and more lanes of traffic. Um, and we're working with the Department of Infrastructure and Transport to really kind of square away uh, those sites. Um, as you can imagine, there's lots of infrastructure um, that goes with these sites. So it's just a matter of making sure that we've got the, the most appropriate site and the safest site um, for that infrastructure to go. So that is an ongoing piece of work. Can you talk us through when you are allowed to touch your phone? Sure. Um, you can touch your phone while you're driving your vehicle if it's only in an approved commercially manufactured cradle and only to answer an incoming phone call or make an outgoing phone call. That is all. No text messaging, no GPSing, no watching videos, no watching YouTube, sending Snapchats um, and all of those 
TikTok and all that um, kind of work that goes on on a phone, um, that believe it or not does happen while people are driving. So you can you can use it under certain circumstances. Um, you can use it as a, a mapping facility if it's in an approved cradle. You just can't touch it. So our advice is if you're going to use it for a, um, a, a mapping or a navigation tool, then while you're stationary and parked, set your route that you're about to travel, hit the go button, then travel the route um, using the phone in the cradle. As long as you don't touch it, it's not a problem. If you need to change uh, anything to do with a GPS or a, or a navigation, then stop, change it and, and reset it. So I hope I've got answered that and made it clear. There's some circumstances you can, but uh, there's very many that you can't. And do you have data on where the highest detection rate has been? Which camera has been picking up the most offences? Uh, yes, yeah, so the, the camera at the north-south motorway at Regency Park um, has detected, in terms of warning letters sent, um, has been uh, the site that's detected the most, and that's um, around 19,640 um, warning letters have been sent from that particular location. Um, and the South Road Torrensville, the Port Wakefield Road, Jeps Cross, and the Port Road Hindmarsh sites are all up well, well over 10,000. Um, and then the Southern Expressway um, is a little bit under that. Uh, and, and they're just numbers, um, clearly, but what, what those numbers tell us, to, the total of the numbers of 60, not over 69,000 people sent, being sent warning letters, um, that we've got these cameras in the right spot because we know that people um, are committing offences at those locations. So um, we'd like to see those numbers come down, obviously. Uh, are you expecting a sharp drop off now that the fines will be applied? Yeah, look, it's something that will clearly um, keep an eye on um, over the next few weeks. Um, uh, yes, is, I think is, is the answer to that. I, I expect that um, fines will deter some people from using their mobile phones. I'm concerned that people who think they can drive around um, constantly on it and receive 33 warning letters might take a little bit longer to get the message. But um, yeah, I, I think we'll see a drop off and we're hoping we, we do get a, a drop off in, in that use. Um, SAPO will supply some more statistics around the mobile phones, sort of one week on from when they've been turned on for fining, a month on and then three months on. So you get a bit of an idea um, how things are tracking, particularly in relation to that downward trend in the graph, which we which we hope continues. So um, we, we know that from the warning period and from the graph, you can see there has been a, a downward trend. Um, so again, we're hoping that continues uh, with now that the fines are coming on board. In terms of this little seatbelt manoeuvre, is that something you saw often in the tracking? Uh, look, I don't, I don't know that. These are just um, a selection of photos that have been uh, picked out money to, to get the message across around you know how people are using these phones and what what um, isn't isn't lawful. So how many of that particular type? Well, I don't know. At least two. Yeah. In terms of the driver that received thirty three warning letters, do you know was that all at the same location? No, I don't know that. No. And you mentioned that these cameras are all set up where people are driving. They're not stationary. Um, do the rules still apply at traffic lights? Can you talk us through that around touching phones? Yeah, you, you, you can't pull up at a traffic light and use your phone. Um, if, you want to, if you want to use your phone in your vehicle, you pull over in your park. Um, stationary at a traffic light is not parked. So if you are stationary at a traffic light using your phone, uh, whether you're leaning over on the passenger seat and touching it, um, or you're physically holding it, you're, you're committing an offence. Um, there's, there's no black and white there. Uh, well, there is black and white, I should say there's no grey there. Um, that's, um, that's an offence. Can I ask one more time a separate road issue? Um, Amy Car Insurance has released some data showing that Marion Road at Marion is one of the top crash hotspots in Australia. Um, is that something that, that, that you've noticed or are there particular hotspots in South Australia that police are regularly attending? Uh, yeah, and I'm aware the statistics come out. I haven't actually seen them myself. I've only heard them on the radio this morning myself. So um, uh, at Traffic Services Branch, we have a, a dedicated group uh, looking at a lot of intelligence coming in around, uh, around crash data, um, you know, 
working out whether distraction or dangerous driving is a, is a contributing factor to collisions and, and the like. So um, we've put a lot of work in, in to identifying, let's call them hotspots, I suppose, in terms of uh, traffic collisions and, and traffic of offending, people who, who are um, engaged in traffic offending. Um, we put resources um, into these places where uh, we try and uh, reduce the incidents happening. Um, right now, I, don't, I, I can't tell you whether Marion Road is, is one of those, but clearly the, the national statistics are, are saying that. So, um, you know, we, we deploy police to, on roads all the time, um, but some of this also gets back to the driver behaviour. Dri drivers themselves can play a significant part in making sure that Marion Road at Marion is not in the top 10 nationally around collisions. So in, enforcement is one thing and enforcement has a place, but um, responsible driver behaviour can also help contribute to, to bringing that down. And over this grace period, can you just tell me what the most shocking examples that you've seen in these detection cameras have been? What, what's been most shocking for you? Oh, oh. I think what's been most shocking to me is, is not actually seeing the photograph. I mean, the, the, in many respects, the photograph's not shocking. It's, it's someone holding a phone or having it strapped to them on a seatbelt. Or, or what's shocking is the people who continue clearly to, to flout this or take the mickey out of this or think it's potentially a bit of a joke. Um, that, that's what's shocking to me. The, the fact that someone can, or multiple people, um, over 1,200 can have four plus um, warning letters. That's what's, that's what's shocking to me. And that's that's um, people just not hitting the message or thinking that they'll never catch me or this doesn't really apply to me or I don't care. You know, that, that's, it's the number for me rather than the photograph. So again, people just need to just drive responsibility and, and, and do the right thing. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you.